You'll fail it, Ollie. You'll fail and you'll die. Pumpkinhead is a 1988 folk horror film directed by monster maker Stan Winston. On a budget of $3 million, Winston brings us a classic folk tale of grief and the cost of vengeance. So let's head to Haggis' shack, shell out our silver dollars as me and my guest dig up Pumpkinhead. My guest is another first timer on the channel. We have yes. Matthew Kister. Is it? Kister, right? I never. It's Keister. But is that's it okay. Keister? Because I've never had to say your last name before. It's You've weird, always just it's... been Matt. You know. It's weird because I've only directed you in multiple. I know. Films. It's weird, but that's okay. I forgive you. <laughs> but thank you so much for for coming on the channel. Um, sure. Uh, you were so nice to invite me on uh, your podcast that we just recorded last night, which was so much fun. I had a blast doing the Steve yeah. cast. <laughs> what was the name? Uh, I, a certain fury certain fury yes certain fury with tatum o'neill yes that was quite the uh, quite the the movie and where can people find that podcast yeah um outpost unknown that's uh the youtube channel of uh myself and my friends uh we just kind of like to you know we always talk about horror movies and star wars and play video games and all that stuff as just part of our everyday life so we just decided why not Put it up on a youtube channel uh and just sort of leave it there for posterity um so yeah. if you go to outpost unknown uh you can check out all kinds of stuff i mean we got reviews on horror films you know new stuff like the trash hellraiser uh movie um old stuff like i'm into like Witchfinder general with vincent price we've got you know we, we look at watch 80s action movies like what's on the real steve cast and stuff so mm -hmm. we got all kinds of wild stuff over there and and i will plug something real quick Lindsay. um i myself am a filmmaker as i mentioned mm -hmm. before and i've uh worked with Lindsay a number of times and we are actually releasing all of our old films up on the Outpost unknown youtube channel and for all of Lindsay's fans up there <laughs> If you go to Outpost <laughs> Unknown on October 30th, you can see Lindsay playing a very angry saloon girl in the Devil's Corkscrew on October 30th, uh, along with a behind-the-scenes gag reel. So be mm -hmm. sure to check that out. I played a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You did. You did. A great one at that. It was so much fun. So much fun to play to play evil characters and bad characters. But let's let's talk about Pumpkinhead. I sure. I would. When did you first see this movie? Because I'm, from what I'm getting, you really like this movie. <laughs> yeah, I think this movie is uh, is really good. I first saw this movie when I was a kid. So my mom was always into horror films. My middle name is Stephen because she loves Stephen King, so that's why she named me Stephen uh, for my middle name. And so I grew up on horror films, and I saw this when I was very young. So this came out what eighty eight somewhere around there so i probably would have seen it in 89 ish when it came out on vhs so i've probably been well eight years old at the time uh, around there so that's when i first saw it and that's when i have my initial memories of pumpkin head and i will say that you know the reaction that i had as a kid to this movie was very different than the reaction i have as an adult to this movie because mm -hmm. when i was a kid i did not think this movie was very good i didn't really like it and as an adult i like it quite a bit so mm -hmm. um it's it's film is always interesting in how it changes throughout yes. the course of your life things that you loved when you were a child you realize well maybe those are just kind of fluff and not that important the things you didn't like as a child you realize wow there's a lot more to that and i think mm -hmm. that's the case with pumpkinhead Oh yeah, you get, just becoming a grown up and having so much more life experience, you pick up on different things, you relate to different things, you like different things as an adult than you did as a kid. So and I, yeah. I, I, I totally get that. I, I had a similar experience. I, I think I saw it on USA or something like that. Oh. USA up all night or something like that. Love Ron but, Sheer. Oh yes, uh, I caught a little bit of it there, but I didn't ever watch it in its entirety because i'd always just catch pieces of it okay. on tv but i remember that monster that monster is very much ingrained in my psyche i didn't watch it fully until i was probably a teenager when i went and run it and and watched it and just loved it um even more than just the monster stuff but there's so much going on in this in this movie and i i've always loved folk horror stuff and yeah. I think this movie is, is a great representation of that. 
I think so. I think uh, upon revisiting it for this show, because it's been a number of years since I had watched it, uh, I was kind of struck by how, you know, this is Stan Winston, Stan Winston, uh, the god that is Stan Winston, yes. his directorial <laughs> debut, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I remember, you know, seeing it way back in the day, because it had probably been 15, 20 years since I had mm -hmm. seen it, that I, I didn't really remember it being as well directed as it was when I revisited it. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of crane shots and, and you know, pans and, you mm -hmm. know, all kinds of really interesting sort of creative decisions that he did directorially. And so, you know, on one hand, I appreciate it for that, but I do like, like you said, this sort of folk horror sort of thing where it's kind of like, I don't know if it's like an urban legend or a curse and stuff yeah. is, you know, in the back country and, you know, the, it's kind of got that tales from the crypty EC comics sort of vibe mm -hmm. to it where it's like something bad happens and then you do something that you think's going to, you know, help you out. And then it turns out to screw you over in the end. Exactly. Sort of deal. So <laughs> I really love, cause I love tales from the crypt. I love EC comics. Those are huge Im uh, impactful things. I used to get the comic books, oh, Gladstone, nice. uh, Gladstone uh, used to in the late 80s early 90s they would uh, reprint all of the vault of horror tales from the crypt and they used to be in the spinner racks uh, at the, uh, like the malls in like california and stuff and so i'd <laughs> always get those and i this reminds me of a classic sort of ec comics tale oh yeah and and it just even just the look of it i i love all the lighting and everything it's a lot of oh, yeah. candlelight and natural light and it makes everything I mean, it's almost like it makes everything fuzzy, but it just gives it almost that dark fairy tale vibe to it. Yeah, and it makes Pumpkinhead look really scary, <laughs> right? Does. Because because if, if you look at the Pumpkinhead creature just mm -hmm. kind of like in, in you know, if I were to just turn, have it behind me just in broad daylight, it's all basically kind of one monotone color. It's yeah. not like a it's not like you're looking at the predator or something no. where there's different colors all over and stuff like that but when you have that gorgeous blue light that's way up high and he just mm -hmm. fogs the shit out of the so entire much fog <laughs> yeah and it's like let's just let's just have beams of light going through and then we'll have like the 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 can or the uh, the light just sort of flashing like lightning in the background mm -hmm. and the drool coming out of it, it just looks yes. awesome And it's a pretty simple story. What you know, what yes. the the basic plot is. It's the city folks come to the country uh, with their city, no, city folk, folk ways. Those fucking city folk, god damn it! We're terrible people. <laughs> we are. I am city folk. We're terrible people. <laughs> and Lance Henriksen is the star of this. He's Ed Holly, as Haggis yeah. would say. Ed Holly. Um, and he has a son and they run this little grocery store on this out by the mountains and these group of city young adults they are not teenagers they're definitely yeah. young adults and uh, you know they're pushy and they're kind of seeing that these locals are just oh look how simple they yeah. are oh he's so cute with his dog and they're very, making fun very... of them a little too Gypsy, no. check out this kid's glasses we're talking coke bottles yeah, very common setup for a lot of folk horror. It's mm -hmm. the the sort of intellectual uh, city people who who go to their colleges and they know everything. Mm -hmm. They're very like science based and they know all this stuff and they they underestimate the intelligence and the sort of wherewithal of sort of the you know the country folk who, yeah. who they they perceive to be you know, dumb and stupid, uh, but it turns out they're not. <laughs> no, not Generally not. No, no they're not. Don't fuck not. with the country folk. And they have these, they're, they're like dirt bikes. Two, yeah. two, of the, two of the city crew have dirt bikes. It's three guys and three girls and they're coupled up with each other. And they decide while they're sitting here waiting for people to go to the bathroom and get supplies and stuff, they're going to bust out the dirt bikes for some fucking reason, because why not? <laughs> kind of weird. That that's There's, there's a couple really weird moments in, in this movie that I, I think hamper it a little bit. And mm -hmm. I think this is kind of one of them. Just yeah. random dirt bike uh, adventure. I don't know where they're going when they stop here. It's like, I don't know why they just sort of decide, but the Joel yeah. character is the asshole. Yeah. And what I, th what I think is great about this um, is this is not like your typical 
horror film. Like I'm, I'm looking at, like, I don't know if you've seen the 2001 Maniacs uh, remake. Uh, I think it was, was it Tom Sullivan who did that? Or I saw I, it when I it first came out and that's it. <laughs> the one with Robert England uh, where, where he plays a dude. Almost in all of these sort of, when the city folk come into the country, all of the characters are douchebags, yes. right? Like, all douchebags but i love the fact that in this movie they're not the vast majority like almost all of them except joel are not douchebags no. whatsoever he's the one making fun of, of lance henriksen's kid he's mm-hmm. the one just being a total you know douche and the other characters kind of stand up to him they're like dude come on now stop stop being a prick so right. to speak um and that was refreshing that, that's refreshing to see that's like because yes. not every not everybody from the city is just monolithic asshole i mean no oh, now we have <laughs> come on i thought we were gonna get everyone settled in first listen if you want to stay here and play with the vegetables that's fine with me i'm going no they're not all I mean, bad because uh, joe his brother is there uh, yeah. and his girlfriend who falls apart until she dies she just has a complete yeah mental breakdown after what's happened and then we get uh i always forget her name the final girl is it tracy oh maybe that sounds right really tracy you know joel is a great guy once you get to know him. i don't know we we just watched a tracy yesterday and yes we did free. so that's so that i don't know stuck in my mind but the final girl in this yeah um she seems to be a little she's got a good head on her shoulders you know she sees what's right and what's wrong and how they should be behaving in this area but they get the dirt bikes out and lance henriksen has to run to get some feed from the house and while he's gone his son runs out to chase the dog who's gone after the the bikes and the bike that joe the asshole is on crashes into the little boy and kills him not right away but essentially kills him And yeah. decides that we need to get the fuck out of here right now. <laughs> yeah, because he's on probation. Because he did this once before. And exactly. they're going to in jail. Yeah, because yeah, he had some accident where a girl got hurt. And it's like, yeah. why are you people still hanging out with this guy? He's been drinking. Remember, that's the whole thing. He's like, I've been drinking. They're going to get me. They're going to throw me away for sure. And then his girlfriend, of course, is defending him. Like, oh, no, no, no. We have to blah, blah, blah. So it was an accident. I almost hit him myself. Yeah, but I've been drinking. They'll fry me. You gotta help me scratch. But again, I like the conflict. I like mm-hmm. that like there's people actually within this friend group pushing back on him. Yes. And then but he's like the big alpha, right? I mean, he's taller and stronger than everybody, so he just beats the shit out of everyone to sort of put them in their place. But even yeah. he later on down the road makes a turn. Mm-hmm. Um, and so and that's what's really interesting about this film is there's there's layers to it. It's not there just is. a simple straight sort of kind of a monster slasher sort of thing oh no oh no and i think the the way the characters are written really really elevates it out of out of just being that simple like morality tale kind of thing he's him and his girlfriend just get in the convertible and get the fuck out of there they take off they they do the cabin and the other people are like we'll go to the cabin and we'll call all that stuff so they're a lot of them are trying to do the right thing and the one brother stays behind. Stay with them! Go! Go! And then Lance Henriksen comes back. And if I was that guy, I, I wouldn't know what to say either if I was in that situation. There, yeah, it's it's played real, right? Yeah, it's it is. you know, um, I, I love that there there is no like Lance Henriksen does not come up, he doesn't start screaming at him, what the F did you do? Blah 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 it's just this moment of silence and and even Stan Winston he shows the reaction of the guy mm-hmm. um you know who's who's like I'll wait here for him I'm not going to leave this kid I'm going to no. wait for the dad to come back and you can kind of see the the pain and anguish in his face and there's that great moment when uh, Lance Henry- Henriksen picks up the kid and he's walking away and the guy's yeah. like is there anything I can do to help right um yeah. and Lance Henriksen just turns around and gives him the death stare and you, the guy's reaction is just like oh man i mean i we fucked up i know there's yeah. nothing we can do here it's really good it's it's acting without dialogue and mm-hmm. conveying everything that needs to be conveyed just through looks which is really awesome or can i help uh, 
and I think Lance Henriksen is really good at that. Not just in this performance, but yeah. other performances he does. And oh, I know, great. I know he takes his roles very, very seriously. <laughs> yeah, I was doing a little bit of research on this, and I, uh, I saw something where he said that he was planning on quitting acting, yeah. and he really wanted, you know, this movie uh, to sort of be able to show his range because all he was playing was like lawyers and cops and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and. Um, he does a great job in this. I mean, you, you really buy him uh, as, you know, and that's another thing that this film does that most horror films don't do. It's a single father raising yeah. the child. And you don't see that very often in horror films. You know, usually it's the mother trying to protect her child. And mm -hmm. it's so refreshing and different to get to see a sort of a strong male character raising his, his child and doing mm -hmm. it well. And not just, oh, he's some deadbeat dad. And, you know, um, so yeah, a lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool setup for this. And you really sort of buy the fact that when this sort of tragedy happens, you're like, oh, I can see why Lance Henriksen is going to want to do. What oh, yeah. Do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, this his son is is the last thing he really has left. His wife has died. Yeah. We don't even really figure know why she's just she's passed yeah. on. But to take his son away from him too that you can really feel the grief and this this whole part of the story uh really reminds me of pet cemetery um yeah just kind of the same themes of grief and doing anything you can things you would never think you would do yeah because you are so stricken by grief sometimes dead is better sometimes that is better <laughs> holy shit well sometimes that is better well, I, I like the fact that uh, another interesting thing about this is when he gets to Haggis's thing, because there's a whole thing. Is it is that Buck Flower? If I remember yes, correctly. Yes, and he's not yes. playing a drunken bomb. <laughs> Some folks would say is how she's got powers. I never heard no such woman. Mr. Wallace, please. I can't tell you what I don't know. I love Buck Flower. I love Buck Flower. I couldn't remember if that was actually him or if it was it another is, movie. It. You don't recognize him right away because he's, he's I know. not dressed as a bum. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love, I love Buck Flower. Um, but, you know, and he he's sort of like, you know, the worldly one, right? He yes. kind of maybe knows about this witch that lives out in the in the forest or whatever well, i think he he was a little well because the opening uh stinger that we cut we didn't talk about yet is oh, pumpkin yeah. head has come before uh yep. when ed harley was a child and i'm sure that buck flowers character was a little older and probably remembers it a little better didn't just yes. he really knows you know what the the gravity of that of what that whole thing is <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think it and and Buck Flower's like, no, man, I'm not going to send you to her. You do not want that. I'm no. sorry that your kid's dead, but I do not want you to do that because then you're going to die, basically. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, his, the kid's like, oh, I'll take you up there, blah, blah. But I love that when Lance Henriksen gets to Haggis's mm -hmm. hut or whatever, whatever her she's shack. looking at. <laughs> yeah, her, her shanty up there in the in the woods. That he doesn't he, he doesn't immediately want vengeance to kill all these kids. Mm -hmm. He wants her to bring him back to life. This is all I got. This is everything. Yeah. And she's like, I don't have the power to do that, but I can do the next best thing, you know. Uh, but there's a there's a price that comes with this, as every great horror film sets yes. up. Like there's always a price. But you ask got a powerful prize. You, you buy that this guy uh, in his grief is like, well, I got to do something. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm pissed off. And then again, what this film does so greatly is later on, he realizes I fucked up. I made a mistake, you know, and mm -hmm. we can all relate to that in that moment. We'd probably oh, yeah. do something similar. And then we realize, oh, shit, the genie is out of the out of the bottle. Yep. I can't put it back in. What am I going to do to try to fix it? Folks used to talk about you, says how you do things. Man had been wronged, he could come to you and he called upon this thing in that man's name and that man, he'd be avenged. I, I'm not sure exactly where this was shot. It's probably Southern California is what it looks like to me. Um, but I, 
the the location really the only time you see anything that looks really california is those landscape shots by their grocery store where you get yeah kind of deserty a little yeah a little high desert ish kind of thing yeah. but when we get into where the the houses and the cabins are it looks a little more because because i i i watch this movie and i look at the characters i think like west virginia type of yeah place is what i'm getting and and but like I said, just that one shot really is like, whoa, California. But the rest, they do a pretty good job. And I really like the design of Haggis's shack and how he yeah. has to get to it. And it's like out over this like boggy pond and there's all these creature noises around and stuff is just everywhere. And there's snakes and spiders and rats and weird potion yeah. ingredients in there. Oh, it's like so the old cool. witch from the EC comics. So yes. It's like the old old witch. And it's cool because Haggis herself looks awesome. And she you does. would expect you would expect like nothing less than something from Stan Winston, right? Oh, yeah. you know, his his team sort of putting this stuff together and she looks cool, she sounds cool, and you're just like, Oh man, don't 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 talk to this lady. Just go go back you know um uh, and you know bad things are going to happen when uh when when this goes down oh yeah so. and th there's that one shot where they're like panning ar around the back side of her and you see the fire coming through yeah. her her like stringy hair and you yeah just... it's like backlit from the full of flames and stuff oh. yeah so she's like there there's a price to this and so she tells him where to find Pumpkinhead. He leaves yeah. his son's body with her um, and goes to, I think she said like boar holler or something like that. Razor yes, back holler. Like razor holler. Yeah. You know, it's a big pumpkin patch. That's what yes. it is. Go to the pumpkin patch and dig it, dig up uh, Pumpkinhead's body. I'm bringing back here some things I gotta do to it for it'll be any use to it. The graveyard, I don't know. You'll know it, honey. You'll know. I always love in horror movies when they when they dig up bodies. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that says about me as a person, but I love when they when they have to go and dig something up. And oh, yeah. again, there's that great real human moment when Lance Henriksen digs it up and he gets grossed out and mm -hmm. he basically drops it down. And he, like he yeah. almost wants to throw up because it's so gross. But then he gets, goes back up, and it's like it's little things like that that set these types of movies apart. Mm -hmm. Because in a in a lesser sort of creative mind's hands, you're not thinking about those little things, oh. you know. And that could have been Lance Henriksen's call too, because Lance Very Henriksen, true. you know, he's a character actor. Mm -hmm. And he, I, I could totally see him saying, hey, hey, look, Stan, I think my character would be very grossed out by this and put that in there. And it, and it tells you a little bit about his mental mental state at that oh, yeah. time. So he carts this thing back to Haggis's cabin and like lays it there because it's tiny and shriveled up. It's like you yeah. can't tell what it is. You can tell it's a body of some sort but you, you see maybe like some hands and maybe a rib but you can't quite tell what the hell he's brought back to her yet and then she slices him and slices the kid and yeah <laughs> kid's dead by this point yeah she's like leave the kid with with me <laughs> like i don't know if i want to do that lady <laughs> no oh so creepy and and so he is blood joined with this creature yeah. in bringing it back And I love the transformation that it does into the full monster and how yeah, they it's show cool. that. It is and the, cool. the, the monster itself, it's, I remember as a kid seeing the monster and thinking it's like, wow, that's a really cool monster. And it still holds up yeah. now, right? As all of Stan Winston's stuff does, you yes. know, it, it still, it stands the test of time because it's so good. But mm -hmm. uh, one of the great things about Stan Winston uh, that I admire him for so much is stan winston would never take credit for anything stan winston would be like 
it's my team. My team put it all together. Uh-huh. Uh, my team did. So it's like we all know Stan. You're the brains behind the behind the right? stuff. But and I think even on on this film, he was very sort of like, well, I'm just a director. I, I'm going to mm-hmm. let my team put it together and had this really relaxed set uh, mm-hmm. that sort of allowed creativity to flourish because yes. that's one of the one of the things that you know with such a small budget three million bucks i mean that's yeah. nothing even back then that was nothing mm-hmm. um you got to have you know when you're making something like this you got to have fun with it and you, you can do. tell that they had fun and they were making the goo and making yeah. the body sort of pulsate and the head come out and stuff like that and just talking about the creature design a little more um because like in that first stinger we kind of get a little shot of its head for a second, but everything else we see is just people being picked up by their legs and yeah. thrown. And it, it, it makes this creature seem immense and it is, and you, 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 but you don't know how it's constructed. And when we see it, it's these giant stilt things that they've yeah. got this guy in and huge extended arms and exaggerated shoulder blades and, everything else and the noise that accompany because it like you said before there's there's light behind it and flashing and showing through different parts but there's also a specific noise i think it's here now yeah and i was trying today to figure out i'm like what did they put in that sound effect and it sounds like cicadas yeah it does And yeah, and that's the thing. It's like uh, something like this. It's it's instantly memorable. So if you're a kid and you see this, it's like you're never going to forget this, seeing this monster. Uh, and even when you're an adult and you see it, like, okay, e- even if you don't like the film, which, like yeah. I said, you're a freak if you don't like this movie because the movie's awesome. Um, uh, but even as an adult, you're like, I will remember Pumpkinhead. I will remember what it looks like, even mm-hmm. if I don't like the movie or anything like that. Um, I still that that design is kind of iconic. And yeah. what's interesting, I was gonna, actually going to ask you of mm-hmm. all of the uh, monsters from this time period, uh, what tier of monster would you put Pumpkinhead on? Like, just design would you put him like an a plus like when i think a tier or s tier designs monster i think like the predator and the xenomorph and that kind of stuff um but you know you have like even you have your iconics of like freddy and and Mm -hmm. jason and michael myers and all this stuff but just in terms of visual aesthetics where would you rank pumpkin head as as a monster pretty pretty high up there i've always liked this design just because it's so striking and weird and different especially in a movie like this it's not sci-fi it's not anything else it's like this folk horror thing so it it takes on like an extra layer of personality that way for me so i've always really liked the creature design and and the the creature of pumpkin head no i think it's great i love it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think it was it McFarlane that did a pumpkin head toy. I think it was their movie Maniacs line once. They had mm-hmm. a pump, pumpkin head. I think I have that one somewhere. Uh, yeah, it's cool. Nice. It's just awesome. nice. And while all this resurrecting and digging and bloodletting is going on, our our city folk are at their cabin, which I ha- like you. I hadn't watched this in a couple years, and they go to the cabin. I'm like, the cabin looks familiar. Was that a Friday Thirteenth cabin? And lo and behold, it is. It's, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it was, um, was it six? It's, or not, not six. What's, what's interesting about this movie is uh, another angle that, that I look at um, is the fact that Pumpkinhead is going after all of these, these kids, basically. And the vast majority of them didn't want anything to do with this. They're the ones trying to get yeah. this guy to to turn himself in. He's locking them in the closet. And if you think about it, if you take a step back and realize, holy shit, Pumpkinhead just murdered a lot of innocent people who had nothing to nothing do. Nothing to do with, with the, yeah, they had nothing, yeah, to, nothing do to do with it. it. And it's like, well, you know, I don't know if it was just the rage of Lance Henriksen's 
character and it's just mm-hmm. Pumpkinhead's going on the warpath to any anybody that gets in his way. But Pumpkinhead just he doesn't like any of these city folk and he's gonna take vengeance on all of them. I love this this first attack stuff that we get because um the the girl who's having the mental breakdown, she's freaking out and she just leaves the cabin. She just yeah. walks out and they're like, where the fuck I'm is out. she going? <laughs> And her boyfriend follows her and they're fighting. And then all of a sudden he get he just picks him up, essentially, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah, Pumpkinhead's big on just picking people up. <laughs> By the head. Sure his father's taking care of him. <laughs> yeah, or carrying them up to the top of a tree and dropping, dropping them. Dropping them up, people. Uh, and, I, and again, I think it's kind of interesting because <laughs> you're, you're sort of thinking like, well, what what does what are Pumpkinhead's powers? Like, what can Pumpkinhead really do? Yeah. Most of the, you know, you're we're, we're we're sort of conditioned to think like, oh, he's going to pick up, uh, and he does with a with a gun at one point in time. Mm-hmm. But you're, it's like, no, he's really just grabs people and throws them really hard against trees and, yeah. and things of that nature. But the the power behind Pumpkinhead is you can't stop him. No. Right. He's he's he cannot be stopped unless mm-hmm. we'll we'll get to a little bit later. There is a way to yes. kind of stop him, but there is no way to, you know, if if you and I were in the situation, mm-hmm. we're fucked. Uh, well, yeah. We ain't we ain't doing anything against Pumpkinhead. So. No. Um, but I do like it when the, when the hand just comes out, grabs people. I love the yeah. I love with the girl when Pumpkinhead's like fucking with them, and uh, like that girl's face up against the window. She's all smashed, and then it just cuts to like her like a dummy head of her just crashing through, just glass all over. I've seen some like criticism of that kind of stuff online. So, so really? people will say, well, Pumpkinhead, I mean, he's toying with these people. He it's, this is a folk. Tale. Why would Pumpkinhead even know? Like there's one moment where uh, Pumpkinhead, like they're trying to escape and they see Pumpkinhead's destroyed all their vehicles, mm-hmm. uh, but the dirt bikes are still there. And the guy gets on the dirt bike, but Pumpkinhead's like, well, here's the <laughs> chain. Here's the chain <laughs> sort of thing. Like, oh, I took the chain off. Ha ha. Aren't I funny? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of criticism about that because people are like, oh, come on. Like, oh, it's a goofy <clears throat> moment. But I feel like it works for, for this character because if we, if we assume that Pumpkinhead takes on sort of like the memories or mm-hmm. the 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 i i don't know the I, what the person who who because we see at the end uh the like lance hendricks is going to mm-hmm. turn in and spoiler yes. alert everybody spoilers uh, but the previous guy so when when lance hendrickson was a kid and he mm-hmm. saw that guy die and his mm-hmm. his parents wouldn't let that guy in maybe that guy has seen dirt bikes back in the day or or some sort of motorcycle yeah. sort of thing and knew what that was and maybe that was that dude a part of that guy was in there and he was like i'm gonna fuck with you because you know pumpkin head has intelligence he's not just a. no he is a he is the demon of vengeance the demon yeah. of vengeance and the demon of vengeance will fuck with you <laughs> Yeah, no, no, and so, and I, and I think it works with the story that they're telling. Is it mm-hmm. kind of goofy? Yeah, it's a little goofy, but I, I can, I can live with it. I'm not gonna Me get, too. you know, butt hurt about that kind of stupid thing. Like the rest of the movie's awesome. So, come oh, on now. And, and there's, there's one shot in this, uh, this whole cabin first attack part that creeped the, the fuck out of me as a kid the ladies are sitting at the the dining room table and they're like wondering where the other people went and if they're coming back and the one gets up to go in the kitchen and it follows her and in the background you see pumpkin head cross across the window oh yeah i love that part it's so freaky You're right, and I had forgotten all about that. So mm-hmm. when I rewatched it, it was it was such a a, ni- a beautiful touch because yes. I had forgotten all about. It. I was like, "Oh, that is cool." That, and it's, like it's done so well because they don't like they don't call attention to it. And it just happens. Yeah, and again, it's 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 Stan Winston trusting in the intelligence of his viewers. Like, mm-hmm. I don't need to have a, a jump scare here or anything no. like that. 
I just want this little subtle creepy thing. And that's so effective in, in horror films when, you, you know, I, I, I'm not a big fan of The Strangers. I don't know if you like The Strangers. I'm not a big fan of it. But what I will say for The Strangers is it does have those sort of creepy moments, right? Where it's like, oh, there's somebody in the background just sort of staring, watching yeah. you when the other character doesn't know. Or uh, like in the in, uh, the recent remake of Invisible Man with Elizabeth Moss, mm -hmm. which I thought was great. Yeah. And it's like you just have those wide shots of, of her in the kitchen. And you know the Invisible Man's there yes. somewhere, but you don't really know. And then just like something moves slightly off the corner of your eye and you're like, mm -hmm. wow, what was that? And, and so that's kind of similar to, to this effect where it just kind of passes by. And if you're really paying attention, you'll notice it and be creeped out. If you're not paying attention, it's going to go right past you. Ed Harley, Lance Henriksen, is getting flashes every time one pumpkin head kills another person. He's seeing it happen because he's got yeah. this psychic-ish connection with the creature now. Because of the blood. The blood. The blood. The blood, the blood. And so he goes back to Haggis and is like, this isn't what I wanted. And she's like, sorry, dude. <laughs> I see it. This is wrong. Nothing I can do. Is, have you ever heard of a genie? Come on now. Right? <laughs> yeah, you don't get what you want. You say you want something that you don't. And she warned him. She warned, she warned him, him there would be a price. Like, mm -hmm. look. But you ask. Got a powerful prize. So he's going to go try to kill Pumpkinhead. And Haggis is. is it, <laughs> I love how she talks. She's like, you'll fail it, Holly. You'll fail it. Yeah. Don't die. I just love yep. her when she talks. You'll fail it, Holly. You'll fail and you'll die. So he thinks he's going to go kill this thing. He's not going to, but I mean, he feels so bad because it he, it's totally not what he... Th I think he might have wanted it at the time, but now that he realizes what yeah. that is, he's like, this, this is not what I want. But it's a yeah. little too late. And it, and it mirrors the Joel character, right? Because yeah. at a certain point, Joel realizes, shit, I, mm -hmm. I'm being an asshole. He lets everybody go. He's like, okay, I yeah. got to turn myself in, basically. Yeah. And and I like that because in the vast majority of horror movies, you're going to see like this. No, They're an asshole, an asshole to the end. the end. Yeah, to the very end. And you're just waiting for him to die. And, you know, I don't know if I completely buy uh, Joel's turn to being sort of a, a good guy in air quotes right um but i appreciate the the willingness to try to do a, something a little different and yeah. and try to make that human thing because i there would be people who would do that you're so oh, yeah. scared i mean put yourself in joel's position you know asshole aside but you know he doesn't want to go to jail no one no. wants to go to prison and he's just scared he's terrified he's doing a very natural human reaction and emotion to what's happening around oh, yeah. him and then he's like, okay, wait a minute. I like that turn. Oh, yeah. And it, it was truly an accident, what happened. Yeah. There was nothing malicious about it. It was truly, truly an accident. Yes. And, and that's the ultimate tragedy of the whole movie, is that yeah. all of this carnage occurs based on an accident. You know, and it's Joel, no matter how much of an asshole he is through this whole thing, um, he didn't know the kid was there when he jumped no, the thing. He, I mean, he who who could have imagined the kid would have ran out there chasing his dog? He would have, he mm -hmm. had no idea. So again, you understand the motivations. You understand why the characters are acting the way they're acting, mm -hmm. and it makes sense. Sometimes even the most assholeish of people make an honest mistake, yeah. and you know. So I mean, that's life. That's how that's how that it works. Is, that is life. My whole life, one big fuck up. But it stops now and uh, so by this time you know our our city folk what's left of them essentially are just running through the woods trying to get away from this thing and ed harley is trying to figure out where they are so he can try to to end this in a way that he thinks he knows how but uh we kind of get a little recreation of the beginning because they're going and banging on people's doors let us in let us in and all the locals yeah. are like get the fuck out of here we want yep. nothing you, you folks are marked i can't help you you folks he's marked marked what do you mean marked
Get out of yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's it's again, it's uh what would George Lucas say? It's it's like poetry. It's it like rhymes. Poetry. It you rhymes. Know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's what that, <laughs> that's that's Pumpkinhead, right? And so um and it, it is so cool to see because that is folk horror, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's look, um we have tradition. We know what's up. We have to follow these rules. Mm-hmm. Like you city folk don't believe in these rules because they're supernatural or they're, yeah. they're you know, you think they're stupid and silly, but We've been living here generations. We know Pumpkinhead. We've seen it. We've yeah. seen it happen before. And look, I am protecting my family. Mm-hmm. You know, you gotta, you gotta skedaddle, dude. You know, figure it out. Um, try to, you know, do something. But uh, I, I love the fact that it's like the people in the country they know things that the city folk don't know. Um, mm-hmm. And I love that it's just it's generational. It's like no, we, oh, yeah. we stick to the same traditions over and over and over again, where you guys do not, um, and that's why you die. We get to one of my favorite set pieces here. Um, the kid, uh, the Buckflower's grandson, um, sneaks out of the house and he's like, "I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you." come with me. I know, I know a safe place. And he takes them to this like rotted out, burned out church. And he said something like, yeah, we tried to start a congregation. It didn't go over too well. (laughs) About 40 years ago, they tried to start a congregation up around here. It didn't work out, I guess. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't look like they've finished building that no, church. To be totally honest. It's like they've got like the the bare skeleton of it up, but it's oh, consecrated, no. like sacred ground, sacred right? Sacred ground, yes. And they're going to be protected from Pumpkinhead because they're in a, you know, a third of a built church. And there's a couple cross kind of beams. Yeah. A couple. Places. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. And Pumpkinhead shows what what that'll do. He takes that cross. He just he's like, fuck this shit. Yeah. It doesn't even affect him. <laughs> yeah, it might. It's like he looks around and is like, really? This is what you guys thought I was going to stop me? I don't think so. No, 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 no. This goes beyond uh, Jesus. <laughs> this, this is uh, elemental here. I mean, oh, this yes. Is oh, lot. yes. And another great shot with the light and the sound of him in the threshold with the cross above yeah. him and the lights coming through. And I just... That that showcases that monster so well. That shot so atmospheric. Yes, so atmospheric. And just watching Pumpkinhead walk looks cool. I mean, through it's the, and they do it through the slats that are still there. Oh, I yeah. love that effect. Love. Yeah, that it's it's just super cool. I mean, it just there's so much of this just gorgeous to look at. It's just mm-hmm. so pretty to to look at a lot of these images. Um, and mm-hmm. I wish I wish uh, Stan Winston would have done more. Yeah. Uh, I know he did like he did a couple like the Michael Jackson things later on. Yeah. I think he actually directed the uh, the Universal Terminator ride sort of oh. thing. I don't know if you ever I don't know if you ever rode that mm-hmm. um, Battle Through Time or Battle Across Time or something like that. I remember as a kid thinking that was just awesome. That's the true sequel to Terminator Two. Everybody, that's the oh true. Oh my gosh! Uh, check that out on YouTube if you haven't watched. It. I'm sure it's. I'm going to because I haven't seen it. No, I. I barely made it out of the Midwest as a child, so I never. It's got, got Edward it. Furlong in it. It's got no everybody way. in it. Yeah, he's I'm in it. I'm watching this as soon as we click off. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's like Battle Across Time or something like that. Um, oh my before gosh. Universal got rid of Terminator as, as a ride, and it's got Arnold in it and oh, uh, all kinds God. of stuff. I'm. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're definitely doing that later. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we were at the church, yes, at the church yeah. of Pumpkinhead. And so they realize that this is not going to stop this thing. So they get the fuck out of there. And they run into another It's like an early version of It Follows. A little <laughs> bit, a little <laughs> bit. It just keeps falling because they're cursed. And Pumpkinhead yes. just keeps going and going. I wonder what happens when Pumpkinhead, like, it, we never see him succeed in any of the movies. There's like... No three or four sequels i think to this, I've, like yeah that. i've seen the second one blood wings yeah. uh, that's bad that's Oops. bad starring amy dolans steve canale and roger clinton Pumpkinhead two <laughs> but I, I was always curious so you know i was like what happens when Pumpkinhead succeeds does he yeah. go just back to the pumpkin patch uh, or who does he come and claim the the person that you know brought him forth because 
I don't know. I, don't know. I want to see that question. movie. Yeah. I want to see what happens when Pumpkinhead kills everybody and then what happens. Right. Ed Harley finally finds them. And the, there's a scene where there's another local with a dog that tells them to get the fuck out of there. And this is where we get the first hint that not only are they are Ed Harley, Lance Henriksen, and Pumpkinhead psychically connected, but they're also physically connected. Because that yeah. guy's dog bites him on the arm. And I think that makes Pumpkinhead drop. Yeah, he's, he's like, oh, yeah. he's like looking at his arm. And then, yes. you know, Lance Henriksen doesn't realize it at that no. point. That's for the no. audience. And then it says, mm-hmm. ah, okay. Yep. Now we see how this is going to wrap up. Oh, yeah. And uh, this is where Joel finally bites it. Yeah, but he's got to do one last asshole. It's like, oh, 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 well, I'm going to walk up to it. And then I was yeah. happy to see him go, honestly. Me too. <laughs> and it was, a, it was a pretty good death. I mean, Pumpkinhead picked... At first, I, the first time I, I saw this part, I thought he was going to shoot him with the gun. I was like, oh, shit, this monster can use a gun? What? But no, he just psh, impales him with it. Impales it, lifts him up though. You know, just lifts his whole body up. You get that nice wide shot of it too. Oh, yeah. as it, goes it looks pretty sweet. Lance Henriksen finally gets hooked up with the, the city folk and uh, he takes them back to his place and he's going to get the flamethrower. Yeah. And we get this moment in the barn where he's getting the flamethrower ready and our final girl comes in to talk to him and is trying to kind of make amends or or at least say I'm sorry in any kind of way she can. She's like, really? (laughs) I had nothing to do with this dude. She's like, like, (laughs) really, it was an accident. And, you know, we were, we wanted to get help. And, and he, even at that point, he still doesn't want, really want to hear what she has to say. Yeah, and you can understand why. Oh, yeah, right? I mean, you, you can completely understand why he's he's conflicted because human beings are conflicted creatures. Yes. Mm-hmm. We have multiple feelings about things, and mm-hmm. you can be very still pissed off uh, on one hand about what ultimately led to the death of your, your child, yeah. while also realizing I made a really stupid mistake and I got to try to stop this somehow. Mm-hmm. Two things can be true, and I think too often in horror films. Uh, writers will write it's like no it's only one way it uh, yeah. you can only do, a character is gonna has a one-track mind and mm-hmm. once we've established that that's how it is mm-hmm. but we see in real life all around us friends family members everything um we have, you mentioned earlier it's like why is anyone hanging out with joel yeah like why is joel there well there's got to be some sort of quality that a lot of these individuals whether it's his brother or mm-hmm. the you know the, his girl Joel's girlfriend yeah they see something in him that they like you know mm-hmm. and i have friends like that right where it's like where <laughs> i won't name names we have uh, matthew kister is it kister right i never it's kister but is that's it okay. kister But I will, I will feel like, why do you hang out with that guy? It's like, well, I mean, he might rub yeah. you the wrong way, but you know, this guy's got a lot of cool qualities um, oh, yeah. that, that works with me. And so that's what I like. And I think when Joel makes his sort of turn and mm-hmm. lets everyone go, I think that's, you know, I don't know if it 100% came across that no. way, but I feel like that's probably how Stan Winston tried to, to do it. Like, this is part of the way uh the reason why people would like him like these people yes. do consider mm-hmm. him a friend because you know even at, at his worst he ultimately did the right thing yes. you know or tried to Pumpkinhead shows up and he he's he's got one more person to kill so he's going after the the final one the final girl and lance henriksen comes running out of the barn with a flamethrower ready to set this thing on fire but he kind of trips he's so clumsy <laughs> And he impales his shoulder on a pistol. Just like a final girl. Always Just tripping. Always tripping and falling. God. And he, he impales himself in the shoulder on a pitchfork. And he he's like, oh, fuck. And he sees that Pumpkinhead is injured in the same place. And it finally clicks with him. Yeah. Oh, I know what I have to do now. And it's yeah. it's really the ultimate final price that he has to pay for what he did, essentially. Yeah. 
But would he had would he have had to pay that price had he just let Pumpkinhead kill that girl? That's what I don't I know. know. I want to know too. I want to know too. I don't know. What, what would happens? Haggis have said? Yeah, I want to know what happens. Uh, somebody go ask Haggis. What happens if uh, Pumpkinhead completes the quest? Is yeah. the penalty still on dead or or what? Um, but I, I I love this this moment because not only this is kind of like the final showdown with, with Pumpkinhead in a way, but you get that great moment of Lance Henriksen when he sort of looks at Pumpkinhead and like Lance Henriksen's eyes like are orange or whatever, yes. and then Pumpkinhead's face is like turning into Lance Henriksen's face, mm-hmm. sort of showing that motif of like. I am you, you are me, and we are we are one sort of thing. Oh yeah. Um and that's just really, really cool. Um I don't quite know why Lance Henriksen's eyes turn kind of like pumpkin heady. Well, I'm uh, I'm wondering if if that's the answer to our question with what happens, you know, if he finishes. I think the the more oh, yeah. this demon eats, the more the 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 conjurer and the creature merge together it's- oh okay so he's literally literally transforming into pumpkin head yeah. um okay that makes sense i like that idea actually i, think, I like I think- that i like that theory <laughs> i like it but i'm going with he, that it said he goes to his truck and he grabs his his pistol and he shoots himself it, but he's in the worst like, way possible in the worst way possible i'm like he's like it's like graze he's got the gun up like this yeah and i'm like come on lance put that thing in your mouth uh, or stick it right to your temple it's, um, yeah it's not gonna do the job and so i mean it it makes pumpkin head falter a little bit you know he drops the girl and you know he staggers a little bit and then pumpkin head comes charging or not pumpkin head he's almost pumpkin head lance henriksen comes you know, kind of stumbling out of the truck. Like, oh, shit. (laughs) She shoots him, doesn't she? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because he he tells her, he's like, basically like, kill me. Very alien. He's like, (laughs) kill me, kill me. Um, And then she picks up the gun and she Mm -hmm. shoots him dead. And then uh, Pumpkinhead drops dead as well. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so that's the end of Pumpkinhead. Or is it? Or is it? Because we see later that the that the thing is being reburied. Yep. And it's got the necklace that Lance Henriksen's son gave to him. So it's obviously yeah. Lance Henriksen's spirit. He's damned. He is cursed to become the new pumpkin head whenever he's yeah. called upon. And that reminds me, one of my favorite moments in this film is early on when Lance Henriksen's with his son Mm -hmm. and his son's like trying to like feed the dog under the table and Lance he doesn't yell at him he's like not just put it in the bowl put it in the bowl come on yeah yeah and then but it's such a great moment between him and his kid where his kid makes this necklace for him and it's it's gaudy it looks ridiculous right um and you know i think his his kid says something like are you gonna wear this wear wear this dad he's like i'm never gonna take it off you don't have to wear it every day or nothing just when it strikes you give me a hug i ain't never taking it off punk well, and the, kids, the kid even says, he's like, you don't have to wear it every day, dad. Yeah. Yeah, it's just such and a great I, moment. It, it's like, it's such a great, a dad loving his son sort of moment. Like, mm-hmm. look, man, you made, this, I love this. I love this. And, you know, I know it means a lot to you if I wear this and I'm going to wear it. It means I a lot love- to me, it means a lot to you. It's great. It's a great moment. It is a great moment. And that makes me think of other, there's other, it, that pops up in a few other movies too, that just great like very simple but powerful father-son moments like in Jaws yeah. where Prody is sitting at the table and he's, you know, the son is copying. Yeah. All. In Frailty with Bill Paxton. <sighs> Rest you in know, peace. Yes, Bill yes. Paxton. Oh my gosh. You know, he's talking to his son about his math homework and like, well, I wasn't very good at it, but I'll tell you what, we'll we'll tackle it together. You know, just yes. really great father-son moments that, it's that so great. may not have anything to do with the, the main plot or story, but it just adds so much character and dimension to it. Yeah. 
because we don't get to see that in horror movies too much. Mm-hmm. You know, we it's like I said, it's very mother uh, child focused. That's what horror yes. mostly is. And so when you get these little moments, like, you know what, guys aren't all total assholes. Guys no. can be good dads, and yes, guys can. can like really love their kids and protect them and want them to be saved. Um, well, you mentioned Pet Cemetery. Yes. It's a perfect example right there. Yes. Pet um, and so you just you know it's it's just it's a very sort of like heartwarming touching thing and it's when it when it happens it's notable because of its lack of uh i don't know what the word about, because it's not there very often for us yes last one in the house to get the privilege of washing the breakfast dishes <laughs> get out of town now i mean this this wasn't a huge hit when it came out and no. i think this is kind of a it's not a forgotten horror movie because there's definitely people who love Pumpkinhead, love the creature design, love the movie. It's just not one that I see pop up as much as other horror movies of the time and other horror yep. monsters. I agree. And I think it's, I, I think the primary reason for that was because it wasn't seen, you know, it's mm-hmm. not like a nightmare on Elm street or no. Halloween or anything like that, where these were huge cultural phenomenon sort of movies. And it was mm-hmm. in the zeitgeist at the time, multiple sequels immediately sort of lined up for these things. And you saw them every year. Uh, I remember going as Freddy Krueger for Halloween in the eighties, you know, it was oh, like, yeah. Hey, yeah. And so it's like, Pumpkinhead, it doesn't lend itself to sort of a, a wide mass appeal. And mm-hmm. I think that's why it's great. Because I, I think it's um, it's great for horror fans to have these, these sort of little movies mm-hmm. that we can enjoy without having to share it with everybody else. That's very um, true. <laughs> and, and, and that's okay. I, I don't want every horror fan to love Pumpkinhead no. and have it and have all the the posters and the toys and stuff all over mm-hmm. because it's just cool to have something for ourselves like oh, yeah. horror is a big tent i always say horror is a big tent very you big have tent. one you can have one one hand uh you got joe dante and like the burbs or something mm-hmm. on the other hand you got like a serbian film yes. right and <laughs> they all live under the same big tent and mm-hmm. Within that big tent, you know, hey, there's just a, a little culture, a subgroup of horror fans over here that really know about this movie and appreciate mm-hmm. it and love it. And Pumpkinhead sits squarely in that for me. Uh, not uh-huh. quite mainstream, but just mm-hmm. mainstream enough that we can enjoy it and hopefully spread the word to, to other people, but not too many. Let the folks at home know once again where to find you, where to find uh, the podcast and everything. Yeah, you can just search Outpost Unknown on YouTube. Uh, all of our stuff should come up. Uh, we do horror movie reviews. I'm the kind of the horror guy of the channel, so I do a lot of horror movie reviews. Yeah, so check out Outpost Unknown. We have all of our movies that we're putting up. Like I said, Lindsay's going to be in the Devil's Corkscrew, yeah. so you can see that on October 30th on, on our channel. Uh, it'll be up there for free to watch. Um, yeah, and if you know happy to have anybody uh come over and check out our stuff and vice versa um lindsey was on our show the real steve cast for certain fury so be sure to come over and listen to that uh yeah, i'm gonna post that probably that, on sunday that was a wild ride <laughs> that was a yeah wild yeah ride. yeah so but yeah okay. thank you for having me appreciate it it was fun yes yes thank you thank you for for coming on here and talking all about pumpkin head one of my favorite horror movies and always a fun one to watch around this time around spooky season and thank all of you out there for joining us and we will catch you next time on i love this movie